For usual living on this channel is for educational purposes only and is not intended as financial advice. It is Teaching Tech Tuesday. Let's talk about correlations. Been getting a lot of questions about Bitcoin correlations lately. We'll talk about why that's important, how to measure it, how to get the data for your own enjoyment. Part of the reason why we talk about correlations for Bitcoin is because we want to know what this thing is. We inherently know as users of the network what it may represent. Is it digital gold? Is it property? Is it commodity? Is it a payments network? Is it a payments rail? Is it a competitor to SWIFT? Is it a competitor to failing fiat currencies? Does it represent freedom and sovereignty and libertarianism and governance and all this other fun stuff? C.J. Wilson kind of refers to it as an octopus. This was the mid-journey interpretation of a Bitcoin oct octopus. My metaphor is a little less violent. I usually call it a chameleon because depending on who you are, depending on the time of day, depending on the year, it can be anything you want it to be. Much like an octopus also has the ability to change into, morph into whatever may fit the moment or camouflage to be a risk on tech stock or risk off digital gold or a payments rail. And there's so many pieces of technology that Bitcoin falls under, it is extremely hard to pigeonhole it as it is only this thing and ever this thing and can only be this thing. Correlations help the mathematical correlation because then we can say, okay, it might be XYZ, but over this time period, it's acted like, or it's performed similar to gold or oil or whatever, right? Whatever the numbers may pan out to be over the years, this has changed. Now, depending on how you want to look at this, your numbers will be different, right? One thing you also have to keep into consideration here is Bitcoin is 24-7. A lot of this other stuff you're comparing it to isn't 24-7. So it does mess up the data a little bit. Not that it's that important, but it's a consideration here. For those unfamiliar with correlations, one would be highly positive, 100%. Negative one would be highly uncorrelated, inversely correlated and zero would be uncorrelated. So we can look at various things that we sort of know what they are. Are they risk on? Are they risk off? What do they represent? And so here's a random bucket I looked at uh, years ago at this point. But you can see over the years, things have changed. 2017, 2018, we were kind of uncoupled with anything. We were loosely tied in 2018 and 2019 to the S&P, to the NASDAQ, in bear market periods, you will notice correlations tend to drift to one. And I'll show an example of that, obviously, with COVID. But post-COVID, post-2020, things changed dramatically. Now, is that a function of the world sort of waking up to what Bitcoin is? Is that a function of changes in the fiat system with the amount of money printing that went on around the world with M2, with the Fed? That's probably a different conversation. But just looking at these correlations, you can say, you know what, it's probably not oil, right? <laughs> Even through the past X number of years, including COVID, we've not really been correlated with oil. So then from a portfolio construction angle, you could say, you know, I want X amount of energy in my portfolio, and maybe you want to mix it up a little bit with something that's uncorrelated, and maybe Bitcoin is attractive for that person, right? But if I have a portfolio full of NASDAQ, you know, high growth tech stuff, that will probably be a different conversation depending on their viewpoint of Bitcoin. You know, it's the same thing when we're talking about Bitcoin and ETH. Realistically, for people outside of crypto, a Bitcoin allocation is probably enough for them for their crypto sleeve because Bitcoin and ETH roughly are fairly correlated on any given day, at any given year. So sometimes we ask these questions because we want to know are we too correlated in our portfolio? What is this thing, right? What is it most like? How does it trade? Does it trade like real estate? Well, 2022 kind of did. This goes up to August 22, by the way. You can separate this out by month, by quarter. We'll look at some recent data in a second. But the point is, it's Bitcoin's been all sorts of different stuff, depending on what's sort of happening in the world. The most obvious real world example for the correlation question is the 60-40 portfolio, 60% 60 equities, 40% fixed income. You can see how that's performed throughout the years. And one of the benefits of this portfolio construction 
is the difference in the correlation between the stocks and bonds, right? When one goes up, the other goes down. When one goes down, the other goes up. That's at least how it's supposed to work in theory. They are supposed to have low correlation, no correlation, inverse correlation, ideally, because as they say here, it dampens the volatility. So if Bitcoin is in fact uncorrelated, that certainly helps with the argument of including it in a portfolio, uncorrelated to things that are already in the portfolio, right? The other question is, does it outperform the equity sleeve? Does it outperform the fixed income sleeve? What are the drawdowns? What are the, what the volatility look like? Here's an article just from the other day, kind of timely, specifically sort of highlighting the return to a negative correlation of the 60-40, saying here that it should be a good thing. It increases diversification, dilutes risk. You diversify if you want to maintain wealth. You concentrate if you want to sort of outperform a sector, if you want to create wealth. So it's definitely not for everybody. But again, you got to think about who's asking these questions. Why are they asking these questions? Are they just trying to figure out what Bitcoin is, how it trades, or are they trying to include it in a portfolio? Ben Eck, Bitwise, a few of the other ETF issuers have done lots of this work, looking at historically, what is this thing, right? <laughs> because that's what a lot of people are asking. They might sort of get the tech piece, they get the network piece. But the next question is always inevitably, okay, is this NASDAQ? Is this SPX? What is this, right? And again, through different periods of time, it's different things. In 2017, 18, 19, we were inverse to NASDAQ. 2020, 21 and forward, we are mainly extremely positively correlated to NASDAQ, right? So that may decrease the argument for portfolio inclusion. It may not, depending on the other metrics in the sort of modern portfolio theory stuff, sharp ratio, drawdown, volatility, clearly adding it to a portfolio, looking at the differences here, adding it to a 60-40 since 2012, since 2020, one, three, five year look back, all of it is extremely positive on the inclusion. So it certainly helps something like the ETFs make their way into a portfolio. And it's part of the reason why a lot of these wealth management firms are already incorporating Bitcoin into the portfolio. Something else to consider when we're talking about correlations, what does the drawdown look like over time? What does the drawdown relative to recovery look like versus other asset classes? When I pulled this up today, I'm immediately thinking of Tesla, which is in kind of a free fall and has been for a long time versus the rest of Mag7, NVIDIA, Meta, Netflix, Amazon, right? So clearly there's some differentiating factors between most of tech and Tesla between Bitcoin and most altcoins when we're talking about drawdowns and drawdown recovery. And that will also play into the correlation question, right? Like why did the drawdown take so long in 2013 to 2017 versus now, right? Clearly, you know, the ETFs are a factor. Legacy doing well is a factor. The reverse repo dumping liquidity into the ecosystem is a factor. But something has obviously changed relative to previous time periods. In COVID in 2020, risk on, risk off, everything correlated to one. Everything went down together. This is Bitcoin. This is gold, S&P, NASDAQ. Some of that is because of the way risk managers tell client, uh, their employees what to do in a situation like this, right? Sell everything, ask questions later, peel X amount of risk from everything. We need money here to pay for a margin call, sell the gold piece, right? So in times of extreme stress, all the correlations across the board will drift to one for the most part. But then it's the recovery where things pan out a little differently, obviously, right? Lately, there's been a lot of talk with our inclusion in ETFs and in legacy land that, you know what, we aren't anything special. We are just uh, TQQQ, which is triple leverage QQQ. Uh, Bianco has been harping on this a lot. And you could argue even before the ETF stuff, certainly after COVID, you know, I don't think that we are coupled to the QQQ because of our adjacency to legacy. Now, I think similar to WTF happened in 1971, there's going to be a WTF happened in 2020 where you get this liquidity explosion and there's only so much to choose from on the asset selection menu. And when there's a spillover in liquidity, it goes into the riskiest stuff, right? But clearly we are fairly correlated with this and we have course have uh, Tavi at Crestcat Capital also beating this drum. <laughs> Interesting that both of these individuals are sort of selling risk off type investments. But look, it's undeniable 
we are over select periods of time fairly correlated with risk fairly correlated with a high growth tech stuff fairly high beta to the nasdaq so is calling ourselves digital gold a bit disingenuous i don't think so because for some people that's what it is for me that's what it is for a lot of other people that's what it is the numbers may tell a different story but certainly that's how many of us think of it as an investment before i talk about the numbers further here let me mention today's video sponsor kraken pro Kraken Pro is a complete overhaul of the Kraken trading experience with a one-stop shop for advanced and professional traders. Kraken Pro enables efficient trading execution across multiple markets with a UI that allows for unique optimization tailored to your trading style. You can check out Kraken Pro with the link in the description of this video. Non-investment advice, crypto trading involves risk of loss. Cryptocurrency services are provided to U.S. and U.S. territory customers by Payward Ventures, Inc., PVI, DBA, Kraken. Bitcoin here has recovered uh, quite a bit. It's actually been fairly uncorrelated to legacy over the past week. As legacy has kind of had a nice little drawdown here, five to six percent. Bitcoin curling up. Is Bitcoin leading legacy? Is risk off in the risk off rally mean that Bitcoin draws down first? Is this even a drawdown? Are we still in the range? Right. People can also use correlations for assumptions on, on how things will act, trade around that accordingly. And if they see a geopolitical event, right. You know, again, this is another thing the legacy people like to point at over the past couple of weeks when we have a spike in geopolitical risk and Bitcoin's open for trading on the weekends, it sells off. So in their mind, we are not digital gold. We are a risk on vehicle. There's also this argument that, look, do we want to be digital gold? Have you seen the gold performance over the past decade? It's not so great. So we do tend to be a mix of things. And depending on how you want to frame it, we are kind of everything. That's just how the cookie crumbles, depending on the day and what's going on. In trading view, there are certain correlation indicators. This is one of them, the top right, the matrix. If you type in uh, crypto correlation or just correlation, it'll pop up there. In this matrix, you can change the time period, the look back period. You can change the assets and it will help you see what's moving at any given time relative to everything else. Over the past week, we've been pretty correlated across the board. Things have been pretty bearish over the past week. We can change that to the past month. Bitcoin and ETH fairly correlated. Sol and BTC less so. BNB and BTC even less so. So on a day-to-day -day basis, do I personally care about correlations? Not really. Do I use correlations in determining my portfolio mix? Not really. I think in general, people take into account correlations when they're determining their portfolio, right? Do I want energy? Do I want more risk off something? Do I want consumer staples? Do I want risk in tech, more risk elsewhere, less risk in S&P? There are obviously ways to quantify that on a professional institutional level. But I think even within your own crypto portfolio, it's maybe worth looking at, hey, are all the meme coins I'm trading completely correlated over the past month? Maybe I don't need as much meme coin as I think I do. Maybe I want to treat the Bitcoin price as the S&P, the ETH price as the NASDAQ, and everything else sort of as GME or AMC or something way down the risk spectrum. That's more of a personal observation and question to ask yourself. But the numbers are here should you so choose to see them and add them to your chart in crypto land in TradingView. There's also other websites. The Block's a good one. Um, if you want just something you can check quickly, there's arithmetic, there's logarithmic, there's Pearson, there's, uh, what's the other one? Spearman, you know, I'm not going to get into all the specifics there, but all these numbers are going to be fairly similar depending on the look back period. And you can see over the, over the past month, we've certainly lost our correlation to gold. We have lost and regained our correlation with legacy. So I think this is tough to trade off of, but it's just good to know what's going on at any given point and what to sort of expect, right? This is kind of about managing expectations. Since 2020, we have been highly correlated to risk on. We have not really been correlated to risk off most of the time. We can isolate this uh, on coin metrics. This is Bitcoin versus ETH. Generally in bear market periods, again, we will correlate highly in bull market periods one of these tend to pull away from the other. So in 2023, Bitcoin started to pull away from ETH. You're seeing that there. You see that in the ETH BTC price. In 2021, this was probably more related to ETH pulling away from Bitcoin. 
but the value here is still 0.8. So to somebody who doesn't care about Bitcoin versus ETH, they don't care about the drama, they don't care about the politics, you know, they don't care about proof of work versus proof of stake. My argument is they are more likely to just stick with Bitcoin and figure that out first before they go down the risk spectrum even further, just because these are so highly correlated at any given time period. On coin metrics, you can select the look back period. You know, this will, even for ETHBTC, kind of get extreme on the lower time frames, one month, one quarter, half a year, whatever. I like a year just because it's nice and smooth, but all things to look at and consider. We can look at Bitcoin against the S&P isolated as well, and you can see the growing correlation versus the shrinking correlation in 2023. Overall, we're still fairly correlated. And again, you can see post-2020 how that correlation shot up quite a bit. Pre-2020, we were fairly uncorrelated to legacy at all in any regard. Bitcoin versus DXY, 2019, growing negative correlation. Since mid-2023, we've, we've had a more positive correlation, but overall the correlation is still negative on the whole. That's certainly what you'd expect. DXY strength means Bitcoin weakness for the most part. And then Bitcoin versus the VIX. Are we correlated to risk on or risk off here, right? And we're still carrying a negative correlation. So that says that we are risk on. If the Bitcoin, if VIX spikes when there is fear and we are inverse of that, right? We are risk on. Over time, this may change. But certainly, again, since 2020, that's definitely skewed a lot of these risk metrics. In Bitcoin versus Tether Gold, XAUT, again, you can see over time, this stuff changes, right? Sometimes we're highly correlated to gold. Sometimes we're not. Sometimes there's a reason for that. Are we post-having? Are we pre-having? Are we carrying some ETF expectation? Are we coming off of a crazy bear market, right? All these are things to think about. Recently. We're basically uncorrelated completely to gold, and we're certainly losing that positive correlation. So for some people, it's just going to be better to calculate it, these numbers themselves, depending on what you want to see. I put this together. I'll put this in the description of the video. But over a multi-year time period, you know, this is kind of what you need to look at to really understand what's going on, because sometimes we are highly correlated to certain things. Sometimes we are not. Sometimes we are mostly uncorrelated. Sometimes we're not, right? It just depends. This is 2023 to present current day data. So right now we are loosely correlated to a lot of things, uncorrelated to TLT, which is just a long bond ETF. So it really just depends what you're looking at, right? But to say we are always one thing or always another thing relative to correlations, not necessarily true based on the data, but depending how the in individual investor wants to think about this, it's whatever you want it to be, right? It's different things for different people at different times. So I hope that helps answer the Bitcoin correlation question. That's all I have for this one. Like, dislike, comment, share, subscribe, and happy trading.